45 seconds and shut it down. You know, at, at the time that I was starting Species, it was definitely, you made a choice. You were either going to be a model or you were going to be an actress. And I really cut it off and I decided to go the acting route because even when I was modeling before I, I'd started acting, my model agents were like, oh, honey, you've got too much. I just didn't, I just didn't have that shut up and be pretty thing about me at all. Never have, didn't have it as a child, um, couldn't fake it. <laughs> you know, I just had way too much to say. I'm connected, Laura. I see what he sees. I left home when I was really young. I left home at about 15 years old, 14 before 15 actually. Um, I was modeling, I was living in that world, living in Paris, living in you know Italy and New York and doing that kind of stuff. And I'm the one who sort of pushed my modeling agents to, to allow me to audition for films because I'd always wanted to act. I loved theater when I was a kid. I, you know, um, this was sort of my way to get there. And, and so I did a lot of TV commercials in New York and the second I was up for Species, the second I heard that it was a possibility, and, and it was a process. I mean, I went through a huge process to, to get the film. It was not an overnighter, let me tell you. This was tough. <laughs> um, the second I got it, that was it. I was like, pack it up. <laughs> Packed up my apartment. My agent came over with a bottle of champagne, and no, no sooner did he leave my apartment than I was like packing my stuff and putting in notice to the apartment. I was like, that's it, I'm going to California. The, you know, it was a great way to go because often people don't have that, um, they don't have the same you know, benefit of, of coming out here with a job. So it was a, it was a good start. So that was it. I never looked back. It was so funny. I, I, there was a woman by the name of Tracy May and she used to be an actress and I ran into her. I was modeling down in Miami and we were coming back on the plane together and uh, her and I sat on the plane and she happened to be going to the species audition, species audition as well. And we were on the plane together and I was like, oh man, yeah, I've not done a lot of movie cat, you know, movie auditions. I'd only done two or three at that point ever. And she started giving me a little rundown. She started telling me, you know, what this character is, the innocence of the character, imagining, you know, not knowing anything, you know. So I was drawn, there was something beautifully innocent about the character Syl, and, and it was so much fun working with this, this girl who did a bit of modeling, was more of an actress than anything else. Um, and she invited me to come stay at her house, I remember, in New York. And uh, so we were working on it together, and she always laughs about it now. She's like, I coached you. You got that role because I coached you. And perhaps she's right. <laughs> but um, I think there was something just very cool and, and symbiotic in the way that where I was in my life and where this character was, I think there was something really cool about getting to play uh, an innocent thrown into a brand new world because it was both true of myself and, and of the character self. So, so yeah, in that way it was very relatable. There was an innocence and such a newness and a lack of desperate, I really wanted to do the movie, but there wasn't the same, I hadn't been acting for years. I wasn't putting so much on it. It was kind of like, cool, if this happens, this will be amazing. And I think there was a real freedom in that. And there was a real freedom to my approach to the whole process, the auditioning process. And, and actually it kind of carried over into getting the role. Because when I found out the actors that were attached to the project, the Ben Kingsleys and the Michael Madsons and the Marg Helgenbergers, and I, I, I'm a movie fan, but I wouldn't call myself a movie buff. I don't know everything about everyone. And I think there was something really, um, cool and special about being in a position with uh, with all these actors that everybody else sort of, you know, Forrest Whitaker, everybody else is sort of crazy about. And I was kind of like, huh? Who are they again? I don't know. I, you know, I'd been in Europe for a long time, so I was kind of out of the loop. And, and before that, I was a child, so I didn't really, there was something really, really easy about that. But um, it was fun. It was really fun. Species One put me in this spotlight in this fishbowl that I was it was so bittersweet I was so grateful for the experience I was so grateful that 
you know, everybody in town wanted to know who this girl is, who's this, you know, you become the new it girl, but I was so unprepared. I mean, I could not have been less prepared. And really, I had a wonderful manager who was a lovely person, but I really could have used more support and more honing of being that young and being in this, having this platform, basically having this, having this place to, to spring from and, and uh, being really unprepared for it. I just didn't, I don't think I saw at that time in my life that the better the people that you work with, the more you'll learn, the better you get. The, I just felt like, whoa, I'm not ready for this. Hang on, I'm not ready. So all these amazing opportunities would come up and I actually felt really just unprepared, just really unprepared. So I would go and do really crappy movies and, and small things, you know, like right after Species I did it, I mean, I mean, I hate to say it, but I did a movie called Adrenaline, and it was just, I, when I think back and I think who was allowing me and advising me and allowing me to do this stuff, I'm, I'm actually more angry, <laughs> angry at them than anything else, but, but ultimately it was my, it was me. It was me feeling unprepared and feeling like I needed to have a playground, you know? I needed to have a little place that I could sort of explore and, and my own little mini acting class and, and try and get more comfortable and, and, uh, and did that by doing some not so great, some, some, some not so great roles. But it certainly, you know, it's certainly when you've had an international hit. I mean, the movie made I don't know some ridiculous amount of money over, you know, internationally. Um, it certainly gets you in the door. It certainly, you know, people, you know, do want to hire you, and they do. You become familiar to people, and so that's there's some there's a lot of power in that. There's a lot of. Um, um, there's a lot of advantages to it. There are some disadvantages too, because at the same time, I know they were looking at me for the Terminator movie afterwards, and it was like, oh, she's already known from Species. She's already the alien. So it has its, you know, like anything in life, advantages and disadvantages. And, um, and obviously still to this day, I mean, this is 20 years on now, I guess, 95, 2000, yeah. Um, still to this day, oh my God, you're the girl from Species, or even worse, even worse, is when they say, oh my God, you look just like the girl from Species. And then when I say, I actually am her, they go, no, you're not. No, you're not. That's worse. <laughs> so that's the impact it's had on my life. <laughs> if We need your help again to find Patrick. I'm sorry, Laura. I can't do that. In many ways, I was so grateful that they wanted me to be in, you know, the next film, and and I felt in some ways it was a real, um, you know, it was they were really acknowledging my part in the success of a film, and that feels good. Obviously, you feel great to be to be a part of something, and and the last thing you ever want to do is bite the hand that feeds you, and and in this case, pun intended. <laughs> um, in this case, obviously, they started my career, MGM and Roger Donaldson, and by them using me in this film, they just absolutely started my career for me. So I was, for sure, very interested in doing the film and had no qualms about it. I did feel, I love the magic of things that are subtle and things that are a little left unsaid and a little left for interpretation. and. Um, <laughs> And Species One had that in spades. There was just a lot of guessing. There's a lot of um, tension, built up tension and that kind of thing. And I think what happens with sequels often is they want more sex, more violence, more, you know, more, 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 more. And they always think that that's gonna make, that's gonna be so much better. So I did have my concerns when I read the script about the fact that it was, it looked gorier, scarier. Um, there was, there was less of the real life stuff and more of the, you know, gore factor. I was a little concerned about that, I have to say. But I had a good time making it. I had a really good time making it. We shot that in, in Baltimore, and uh, the director, Peter Medak, is just a gem of a human being. I just could not have loved him more. I mean, he's just, a, just an incredible man and um, a great director, and I thought that with, you know, the script that he was working with and, and the, the direction that the script had taken, um, I thought he just did such a great job and, and was incredible. I couldn't say enough good things about him. I 
I remember in Species 2, Eve, when, when she jumps out of the, the glass encasement, um, they had done a whole setup of candy glass and they sort of asked me if I wanted to do it. And, and so I did, I did my own stunts for that kind of stuff. And you know, I was very, I'm very, very um, adventurous ballsy whatever you want to call it so i love to just get in there and do whatever whatever i could do by myself so we did some of that i had a stunt double as well who did it from further away angles and stuff like that but all the close-up stuff i mean i did jump through the glass and um i i just love that kind of stuff i remember the night that we were doing squibs and i was getting shot and we were running long distance stuff and we were running through the streets and i was just getting all these shots and squibs and stuff i mean the number of stings and bruises and things that I had. Uh, um, but that's fun. That's not, you know, that's just so part of the, part of the experience of making it. But now I have great memories from that. Justin and I, first of all, we got along amazingly. We had really, really great time working together. He had a lot of special effects, and so we would laugh, and we'd spend a lot of time in the trailer together hanging out, because sometimes two or three days would go by. They would set up a shot, and then the day would go by, and they hadn't gotten to it, and then they would try again the next day. <laughs> sometimes there were two or three days that we would not shoot something that was you know, scheduled for that day, and we would just sit there, and I don't remember what we were doing. but. This is the kind of money they were throwing around and special effects when special effects were involved and computer CGI is involved and you know, all of that kind of stuff, lighting and stuff that it would just, there goes another day, whoops. <laughs> I don't remember if I saw it in the theater. I don't remember if I saw a screening of it. Because the first one, I came out of the theater and I said to my agents, I hate this. This is awful. Oh my God, I can't believe I did this movie. You know, blah, blah, blah. And they were obviously, everybody from the studio were thinking, oh my God, she's going to go on a worldwide tour to promote this movie. Someone have a chat with her. <laughs> and it was just that overwhelming first feeling of seeing yourself in, you know, on the screen like that. I actually did like the movie and certainly in retrospect really can appreciate it but but at the time when you've never seen yourself that big before um, so I, I know that for Species 2 I'd already sort of come around in the ways of, of being able to deal with seeing myself on screen I think that that was that was good they approached me about a third species and I just started having hot sweats. I was <laughs> I'm like, uh oh, oh boy, what am I going to have to do this time? I'm a little older and I don't want those boobies hanging out anymore. <laughs> but they, they did approach me about doing the film and um, I, I, believe, I believe actually at that point they had already sort of um, figured that it would just be uh, sort of pass the torch and, and uh, bring in this sort of new, you know, young blood. I think they paid me as much for that one day past the torch scene as they did for the entire first film as well, if I'm being honest. And I had children at that point, so you know, there was no way. I would never say no to them. I mean, I would never, you know, this movie, this franchise species has given me an entire career. It started my career, it's, you know, it was a springboard to everything, so thus we're sitting here. <laughs> I think Species was that was the thing that um, started my career and s sort of was a springboard to everything that came after and and uh, gave me a moment to be sort of an iconic character in the minds, certainly in the minds of people who love science fiction and and the, the beautiful thing about this this franchise and this type of movie is first of all I thought it was quite female empowering in, in many ways. Um, I loved, I, you know, I did get known for playing very strong female characters, and it could be a lot worse. I, I'm grateful for that. I'm, I'm you know, I, I feel proud to be a part of, you know, a legacy that, that, um, that is strange. Even though it's, you know, fantasy and um, all of that, I do feel proud to be a part of a legacy that did also take a female and sort of make her the, 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 the number one in the movie, you know, in some ways you were following that character. That's what, you know, that was the main character and that doesn't happen every day in Hollywood. So I feel really proud to be a part of the franchise as a whole. <laughs>